If you had a good teacher, you might have seen proofs of why the circle theorems are true. These are the theorems that tell us things like the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference, and angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. But most of the time, the proofs given for these theorems are wrong, or at least incomplete, because they miss out some important cases. In this video, I'll show you proofs of these five key circle theorems, explain where they usually fall short, and show you how to give a proof that covers all cases. The first circle theorem we will prove is the one that says that the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference. More precisely, if we draw a chord in the circle, and then form an angle by joining the ends of the chord to the center of the circle, then that angle will be exactly double the size of any angle we can make by joining the ends of the chord to any point on the circumference of the circle. For this to work, we just need the point at the circumference to be in the same segment as the center of the circle, so it can be over here, but not over here. This is really the most critical circle theorem, because once we've proven it, we'll see that we can get a lot more circle theorems from it very easily. For example, since it can't matter where the point A is on the circle, then the angle at the circumference will be half of the angle at the centre wherever it is. So if we forget about the angle at the centre, then we get the theorem that says that all angles subtended by the chord BC in the same segment are equal. By the way, subtended is just a formal way of describing an angle. So let's call the point at the circumference A, and the points at the circumference on the chord B and C. We will also always call the centre of the circle O. Then the theorem we're about to prove could be stated as the angle subtended by the chord BC at O is twice the angle subtended by the chord BC at A. But most people just say the angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference. So let's prove this and show why it works. And the really nice thing here is that the only thing we're going to need to use is the definition of a circle and some basic angle facts. A circle is defined as being all the points that are the same distance from a given point. That point is the centre of the circle, and the distance is the radius of the circle. So in particular, we know that the lengths OA and OB and OC are all equal, and it's really adding in this extra line OA that makes this proof work. This means that OAB is an isosceles triangle, and so also is OAC. Then labelling angle BAO as X, it must also be that angle ABO is equal to X as well. Similarly, if we label angle OAC as Y, then angle OCA is also Y. Since angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we must have that angle AOB is 180 minus 2X, and angle AOC is 180 minus 2Y. Then since angles around a point sum to 360 degrees, then angle BOC must equal 360 minus 180 minus 2X minus 180 minus 2Y. Simplifying this gives 2x plus 2y, which is exactly double x plus y. This means that the angle at the centre BOC is exactly double the angle at the circumference BAC, and so we've shown that the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. And that's where most proofs you will see will leave it, and that's why most of them are wrong, because we're not quite finished. We also need to think about what happens if the point A is over here. The proof we've just given doesn't cover this case, and in maths a proof isn't a proof until you've shown it works for all the cases you want to use the theorem for. Luckily it turns out we can prove this in a very similar way, but we must be very careful. The proof is actually so similar though, it will be interesting to have both diagrams side by side as we prove this extra case. So as before, we start by noticing OA, OB and OC must all be equal in length, because they are all radii of the circle. And again, it's adding in this line OA that is really key to proving this result. Again, we're going to call the angle BAO X, just as we did before. And since OAB is an isosceles triangle, this means that angle OBA is also equal to X. Again, we're also going to label the angle OAC as Y as before. Just as before, we can look at triangle AOB and say that angle AOB is 180 minus 2X, because angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Similarly, in triangle OAC, the angle AOC is 180 minus 2Y. Now the angle BOC is just angle AOC minus angle AOB. This is 180 minus 2Y minus 180 minus 2X, which simplifies to give 2X minus 2Y, which is the angle subtended by the chord BC at the centre of the circle. The angle subtended by the chord BC at the circumference is BAC, and we can see that this is exactly angle BAO minus angle CAO, which is X minus Y and that's exactly half of the angle at the centre, 2x minus 2y. So we've followed almost precisely the same argument, and now we really do know that the theorem works in this case as well. We just had to work with x minus y instead of x plus y to deal with the different location of a. So we've got our first circle theorem that says if the angle at the circumference is x, then the angle at the centre is 2x. 
but we still need to say this carefully because we've only shown this works when A is any point on the major arc BC, that's the larger part of the circumference that goes from B to C. If A instead lies on the minor arc from B to C, it turns out that the angle is actually 180 minus X, and we'll come back to that in a moment. First, let's just make sure we're really precise about what we've proven, which is that the angle subtended by a chord at the centre of the circle is double any angle subtended by that chord at the circumference in the same segment. And as we saw earlier, this also gives us for free the theorem that says that any angles that are in the same segment and are all subtended by the same chord must all be equal, because they are all equal to one half of that same angle at the centre. Now we've seen that we can move the point A around the circumference, and we can also move the chord BC around freely without impacting the result. This will change the angle at the centre and at the circumference, but the angle at the centre will still always be double the angle on the circumference. But let's just think about the cases that might not have obviously fit into the proof. That's not just to be really rigorous, we're doing it because it's also going to show us that some of the other circle theorems we want are true too. So let's suppose we move the chord BC so that it's now a diameter of the circle. We can see that in this case not much really changes about the proof. But in this case the angle BOC becomes 180 degrees, because BOC is now a straight line. This means that the angle BAC is a half of that, and so it's 90 degrees. So nothing has really changed here, but we've actually proven another one of our circle theorems, which says that any angle subtended by a diameter is a right angle. That means that A can be anywhere around the circle, and so long as the chord BC goes through the centre of the circle, then angle BAC will be a right angle. Now what if we took BC even further beyond the centre of the circle? Again, not much changes about our proof, it's just that the angle at the centre is now bigger than 180 degrees, and the angle at the circumference is bigger than a right angle. But look what happens when we turn this diagram upside down. For simplicity, let's label the angle BAC just as x rather than as x plus y. Then the larger angle BOC is 2x by our theorem. So the smaller angle BOC is 360 minus 2x. We can add another point on the circle D, and angle CDB will be the angle at the circumference subtended by the chord CB. And so it must be exactly a half of angle BOC, which would be 180 minus X. Let's remove all of the lines except these outside ones, leaving a cyclic quadrilateral. A cyclic quadrilateral is the name for a quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on the circumference of a circle. So you can see here that we've proven the theorem that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees because if angle BAC is X, then angle BDC must be 180 minus X. So that's another famous circle theorem that's come for free with our main result. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral always sum to 180 degrees. Of course, the lesson we've learned from earlier is that it's important to consider all of the different cases as to where the points on this cyclic quadrilateral might lie. In particular, you might wonder if there's something special about cyclic quadrilaterals which contain the centre of the circle as this one does. So let's move the cyclic quadrilateral outside of the centre of the circle and make sure it doesn't make any difference. It's a good job we proved the extra case of the original theorem because that's exactly what makes this case work as well. Because we know if the angle BAC is X, that's the angle subtended by the chord BC at the circumference, then the angle BOC is the angle at the centre and so it's 2X. The larger angle BOC is then 360 minus 2X then by the last case of our main theorem, we have that the angle BDC is a half of that angle, which is 180 minus X, and we see that our cyclic quadrilateral result does work for this cyclic quadrilateral too, and so it really does work for all cyclic quadrilaterals. Now we've already proved so much from our main theorem, but there's actually one more important circle theorem that we can prove quite easily now too. That's the alternate segment theorem, which says that the angle between a tangent to the circle and the chord that meets that tangent it's equal to any angle subtended by that chord in the alternate segment. That's a bit of a mouthful, so let's make that really clear. A tangent to a circle is a straight line that just touches the circle and is perpendicular to the radius, so the angle between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees. If we draw a chord from that point, let's call it BC, and then label the other end of the tangent D, we're talking about this angle BCD, that's the angle between the tangent and the chord. The alternate segment theorem says that this angle is equal to any angle subtended by the chord BC in the alternate segment. That's the segment on the other side of the chord. So we can put a point A anywhere here, and the angle BAC will be the same as the angle BCD. To prove this is true, let's start by labelling the angle BCD as X. As the tangent meets the radius of a circle at right angles, the angle DCO is 90 degrees, and so angle BCO is 90 minus X degrees. But BO and OC are both radii of the circle, and so BOC is an isosceles triangle. This means that the angle OBC is also 90 minus X. 
Then angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees, and so angle BOC is 180 minus 90 minus x minus 90 minus x, which simplifies to 2x. But angle BOC is the angle subtended by the chord BC at the centre, and angle BAC is the angle subtended by the chord BC at the circumference. So angle BAC is exactly a half of angle BOC, and so must also equal x. So it's the same as angle BCD, and again, this is true wherever we move the point A and the chord BC. And so we've proved the alternate segment theorem. Except you might ask if this still works if the chord BC is on the other side of the centre of the circle. And it does, but again, we just need to adapt the proof very slightly. In fact, the easiest way to do this is to remove the radius and label another point E on the tangent and another point F on the circle over here. If angle DCB is X, then angle BCE is 180 minus X. By the case of the alternate segment theorem that we've already proved, this would be equal to CFB, so that's also 180 minus X. Then using the fact that ACFB is a cyclic quadrilateral, and the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees, then angle BAC is 180 minus 180 minus X, which is just X, and so is equal to angle BCD. So we've shown the alternate segment theorem really does work in this case as well. So that's how to prove all of these circle theorems, and I think it's pretty neat that they really all come from that basic circle theorem, which just relies on the fact that the lengths of all the radii are equal, which is a really very basic property of the circle. And if you enjoyed that, I think you'll really like this video about an Olympiad geometry problem that at first glance is just about interior and exterior angles of polygons, but when you look deeply, you'll see it also has a really slick answer that uses one of the circle theorems that we've just proved here.